I'm Joe Saluski, and this is my story. It starts when I was a kid. I was born in Toledo, Ohio, raised Catholic until my teen years when I broke away from the Catholic Church. Um, I attended church here and there, but I pretty much became a wild child, partying, uh, living life. I met a girl when I was 16 years old. Um, we had a relationship, uh, intimate. Um, she ended up getting pregnant, and it was, that, it was that right after we broke up that we found out. Her parents and my parents got together. We, we both came from a kind of, I don't want to say a poor background, but definitely couldn't afford to have another, a child. Uh, we weren't together, so uh, our parents decided we would give this child up for adoption through the Catholic Social Service. And, and we did do that. Um, upon my graduating, uh, I joined the military, the Army. I was in for five years where I met my first wife, Dora. Uh, we dated until I got shipped to Korea, but we kind of were together and kind of not unofficially. Uh, I was still kind of young and naive, but we ended up getting married when I came back. Um, married for about three years or so. Uh, we had a child, Joanne moved to Atlanta where I was stationed at Fort McPherson and I was working for the sheriff's office after I got out of the military down there in DeKalb County and things were going good but I got called into internal affairs one day to make sure I didn't know about my wife was arrested for committing a theft. I, I was shocked. I was like, what? What do you mean? And, and uh, she had been stealing from her employer at an apartment complex where she was a property manager. Well, for better or for worse, uh, I, I stood by her side. Um, I told her we'd get through this, just be honest, and we'll get through it. It started off like a couple hundred dollar misdemeanor, but she kept lying to me through the whole thing, which ended up being thousands of dollars and a felony. Um, it really impacted my job, my life. I, I finally filed for a divorce and, and also for custody of my daughter. She moved to Augusta, Georgia for a while and I was in Atlanta across the state. So I had to travel there for court and stuff. And finally, by Halloween of 1991, I was awarded joint custody of our daughter. And I was excited to, to get her, but. Me being a nice guy that I am, she asked me, my ex-wife, if she could keep our daughter till Thanksgiving, and then I could have her for the rest of the year. Well, that sounded good. I was gonna get her a little bit longer than what I planned. So I agreed to it and I went back to Atlanta. My, my ex-wife had remarried at this point, uh, and they had moved to Florida, so they had to travel back there for court and stuff, but they went back to Tallahassee, Florida. Well, this was just the beginning of a bumpy road. Um, a few days later on November 4th, I got a phone call. They were, they were down there. My daughter was playing on the couch uh, and she had fell and hit her head on the coffee table and knocked herself unconscious. They rushed her to the hospital. My ex-wife said, she's gonna be fine. They're just gonna do some tests on her. But she was unconscious and unresponsive. I, I was devastated. I'm in Atlanta. She's in Tallahassee, Florida. So I, I didn't have no money because I, I had been paying it all in child support and stuff and working two jobs. I had some really good neighbors, angels. I was, they were my best friends. Um, I would consult too about all my problems. And of course, I went straight to them and told them I didn't know what I was going to do while I sat with my buddy Sean, his wife Tanya, had went through the whole neighborhood of our apartment complex, accepting donations to get me a flight down there to Tallahassee, which she successfully did. Everybody was more than generous. I got enough for the flight. They took me to the airport. Come to find out I only had enough for one way. I told the lady behind the counter I didn't care. Give me a one-way ticket. I'll worry about getting home later. Well, another angel in my life, she, uh, 
She says, well, how about if I give you a round trip ticket, but I gotta charge you something and I'll charge you a dollar for the round trip. <laughs> of course, I was like, yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> you know, longest flight of my life. Um, I was holding on to a picture of my daughter, obviously like any parent, crying, worried, uh, praying. Lord, I was praying. Um, there was a lady sitting next to me that I did not know. She obviously saw my emotional state and she, uh, she got to know me. We talked, she asked me what was going on. And of course I told her, showed her the pictures and kind of got me over the crying part. I kind of talked about my little baby get girl. Um, I mean, there's no father and daughter could be closer. Uh, this lady was gonna end up being an angel too, believe it or not. I had no idea who this lady is. Couldn't tell you her name to this day, um, but that will come. So she you know, asked where I was going and all I told her, I gotta to go to Tallahassee General or whatever hospital that was. Um, I get there and saw my little girl laying in the hospital bed unconscious. She looked like a little doll. Uh, she was two and a half years old and I spent the night there. Um, she was hooked up to machines. They, they had to do more MRIs and tests, um, injected her with dyes to see if there's brain activity. Uh, come to, I spent the night in her room next to her. Next to her, my ex and her husband left. And, uh, I wouldn't leave her side. I just prayed and prayed and prayed that she'd open up her eyes and and see me there. Um, the next day after the tests, the doctor pulled us off to the side. And after giving us the news that she was never gonna wake up again, that the machines were the only thing keeping her alive, my ex and her husband left, left me with that decision that we had to pull the plug on the machines. I pulled the doctor aside and uh, said, hey, if this was your little girl, what would you do? Um, is there specialists I can call? Is there anyone, any, anything, you know, that can be done? And he assured me that there was nothing. Um, so my parents showed up. They lived a couple hours from there and Everybody kind of got to say their goodbyes, and my one request was to sit in this rocking chair that was next to her bed that I'd been sleeping in uh, and hold her as we unplugged the machine, which monitored her heart rate and everything. Um, and I, I was there when she came into the world, and I was there when she went out. I, uh, I still hear the, the beeping of the heart rate just getting slower and slower, and as it did, her body just went limp in my arms as I rocked her to sleep. <sighs> At that point, my world was over. It ended. Well, the day of the funeral, several people showed up, my family, all my friends uh, from Atlanta, flew down, um, the nurses that helped take care of my daughter and me uh, was there. The lady on that airplane, she showed up. <laughs> uh, she evidently was, if I understood right, she, was, she had her own business. She was a very wealthy businesswoman. She, I didn't know it, but the whole night I was at the hospital, she kept calling and checking up on me and my daughter. She donated, I don't know how much, to, to help out. Uh, they just told me that, that she made a large donation um, and sent flowers, of course. Uh, so she, she really listened and was there for me. Um, I remember standing when I, after, after the graveside service part going in to the room where they had the meals and stuff and everybody was talking and stuff and I just kind of went off on my own 
and watch them lower her down and, and start covering her up in her grave. And that's, that's when the switch hit me and all my sorrow and grief turned to rage. I was, I was so angry. Um, I was angry at my ex, angry at the world, angry at God. Um, I just didn't understand how a child could go before their parent. And um, over the ne next few months, I'd start drinking a lot. Um, lost my job at the sheriff's office. And, and I blamed God for taking my little girl away from me. It just wasn't right. I, especially after I worked so hard to get custody of her, to get that joint custody. We were gonna have a great life together. Uh, now I'm not gonna see my little girl graduate, grow up, get married. Um, so not only did I, I blame God, but I cursed him. I said things that I look back on and it just wasn't fair. Um, shortly after her death, the whole time that when this happened, I, I did have a girlfriend. Um, is she was young and we found out shortly after my daughter's death that she was pregnant um, I wasn't quite ready I, I couldn't be a parent that soon again I mean it just I was a mess um, so we got married to put her on insurance. That was about it. But we just fought and fought and fought because I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be there. My heart wasn't in it. And so I filed for a divorce again. And later on, my daughter Kelly was born. Um, I, uh, I ended up moving away from Georgia, going back to Ohio still drinking a lot uh, not not taking life too serious living having a lot of pity on myself um, still just just wasn't there my drinking led to unemployment homelessness I lived in my car for a long time I I had nothing left I had hit further than rock bottom um, I just figured that's where I was meant to be it got so bad that one day I, I, I tried to kill myself. I just couldn't go on. After, after a long time passed, slow recovery, something spoke to me. I, I couldn't tell you when. I decided I gotta stop pitying myself. Um, I mean, I, 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 one day I just kneeled down at my bedside and. I begged God to forgive me for all those nasty things I said to him. And, and uh, of course, I didn't mean it. And uh, I, would, I would find myself just repeatedly, always praying, driving down the road, talking to God. And evidently, he was listening. Uh, he slowly started giving me stuff back. I got a home. Got a good job, and uh, I knew that there was there was a reason beyond my understanding why why he took her from me. It was meant to be, um, and I would soon find out that this would play a big role in my future and my my life. So through the next few years, with help from my family and friends, I, I got my life back together again. 1996, I met my current wife, Lisa. We've been together ever since. Um, she gave me a, a new purpose. We found a little non-denominational church up in Ohio that we went to, got God back in my life. Um, and then we eventually got married in that little church, June 24th of 2000 and on to Tennessee, and here we are. Um, 
But I didn't know it. The blessings were going to hit me hard. I mean, they were just going to be nonstop. April 2nd, 2009, you know, I'd given up on the thought of being a father again, but my son Caden was born. I remember holding him in my arms and promising him I'd keep him safe. Didn't think I'd ever make it to that point again. And it's just, I thank God for giving me another chance. And then, after not being in my daughter Kelly's life for 13 years, we ended up reconnecting. I would not only became what we call one of her dads, uh, I became pretty much her best friend. She's married, given me three beautiful granddaughters. And then June 29th, a year later after Caden was born, 2010, comes along my other son, Logan. I love them boys to death. <laughs> Believe it or not, it still wasn't going to stop. 2018 Father's Day weekend on Facebook Messenger, you may have heard of it. I get a message from a young lady. Thinks I might be her dad. And it, her name's Mamie. Uh, my little girl from when I was in high school. She got adopted by a teacher from my old school, I didn't know him, but had a beautiful life. She's got a daughter, married happily, and she's a school teacher in Ohio. And I remember our reunion up in a little Mexican restaurant. Of course, I was there early, and I just remember, and it was so magnificent, the place erupted in applause, and I'm a blubbering, mess uh, but now we continue to stay in touch and I, I still can tell you other than God loves me and he was there the whole time just waiting waiting until I was ready but once I accepted him as my Lord and Savior again he, he let me know he was there that if anybody else out there has to deal with that kind of loss, uh, feels they've hit rock bottom, they, they need to know they're not alone. No matter what they think, uh, if it's not obvious, um, he's there. He's, he's with them. And there's others out here, like myself, that are here to talk to help get through that grieving, rage, sorrow, whatever you're going through. We, we may not understand. It's not our place to understand. But know that we'll all be together again. This, this is my story. <sighs>